Hey everybody, this is Matthew Cook and this is the Tactical Dad Podcast, episode 91. And we are going to talk about choosing self-defense ammo. Since I have chosen my ammo, I have my reasons for choosing ammo and I have now a little bit of knowledge on what you should consider when actually deciding to choose ammo for self-defense. I spoke to my firearms instructor, I spoke to a few other I'm not going to say industry professionals, Um, they're military guys who are now in law enforcement and high profile security. That was pretty cool to find out. So one of uh, a guy that I know, he is part of the security unit for some like state officials. So pretty cool. So I got some input on uh, from them on choosing a a type of ammunition for self-defense. And in most cases, it's going to be a handgun. So obviously, I have chosen for a handgun and I've put together what I feel are six things to consider and honestly you could argue that it's just five because when it's for self-defense I don't think that a big factor shouldn't be cost like sell what you need to sell make money however you need to make money and invest in self-defense ammo so Cost is, I've thrown cost in there, but really, I'm not fact, not using that too much of a factor. I know, we, we know, I know now, and you should know that when you buy an ammo that's specifically for self-defense, home defense, self-defense, it's going to be more expensive. So suck it up and just, there you go, deal with it. So I have laid out five things, six if you count in the cost factor, five points to consider when choosing ammo for self-defense and it's really aimed at new shooters beginner shooters novice gun owners because you know there's over seven million five seven ten million there's lots of new gun owners so it's really aimed at those people if there are any experts that listen to this podcast any firearms and ammunition experts i would love your input really would because you obviously know more than i do i'm not an expert i am not an industry expert i am becoming a, a uh, expert and I'm trying to become a competitive shooter therefore everything I say and honestly let's be honest even what experts say can be found on the internet somewhere so let me just I'll preface the the following content with that because no doubt some people are gonna throw some bashing at me so number one terminal performance look for ammunition that is designed to expand upon impact like that's the point of that's the difference between a round nose and a hollow point. Hollow point's more expensive. If you don't know what a hollow point is, Google it or look at one of the other previous podcasts that I've done because I think I did a pretty good job of explaining it. So a hollow point is usually in a type of ammunition that is used for home defense, self-defense. If you're going to be out, like out concealed carry, like the whole point of doing that is like for your own protection. So you're probably going to carry hollow points in that as well. It's more expensive. Um, but the purpose of this is it does greater damage, greater tissue damage, and it increases the stopping power of the round because it expands upon impact. Like the, 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 the design of it, the a hollow point's design and construction is so upon impact, it expands, causes greater tissue damage, increases stopping power, and um, just like does more damage and is quickly effective and that's the whole point, right? You want to put that threat, put that, uh, if, if it's a person or a thing, whatever it is, the threat, you know, you want to knock it out. So that's the purpose of it. That is what you need to consider the performance. Like you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to take, take a round nose because I, I read something pretty funny, actually. Like for every bullet that guns out, it comes for every bullet, there's a lawyer that's attached to it or something like that. It was something to do with something legal anyway. And, Basically, the gist of it was, if you're shooting, that bullet is if that bullet is leaving your gun, you better damn well know where it's going and what it's going to do as best you can because a lawyer's attached to it. So it's your responsibility. It's coming out of your firearm. So the last thing you want to do is for a round nose to go through the threat and hit a bystander, hit something or someone unintentionally because that's going to have serious consequences so it does prevent that issue 
uh, hollow point versus roundness. Next thing, caliber. Choose a caliber that you can comfortably handle and shoot accurately. Some popular calibers for self-defense include the 9mm, very popular, we've talked a lot about that over the course of these 90-odd podcasts, a, uh, uh, and a .45 SEP. <clears throat> They're the two that I... There's, there's, there's more, but I just narrowed it down to two, uh, based on my knowledge, which obviously isn't too deep at the moment. However, I, I didn't want to give an extensive list because this podcast isn't designed to be an hour long. So 9mm or 0.45 SEP. There are others, but uh, basically consider the caliber that you can comfortably handle because uh, ultimately you have to handle and shoot the, the, the firearm. So, and you know what, as a, new, as a new shooter, as a new gun owner, you're really not gonna, you're not really gonna know too much of a difference. They kind of, from personal experience, a, a a compact and a full size like the recoil on both when i first started felt the same like it i i sucked it, it was like the thing the, the the damn thing almost came out of my hand because i've never had i'd never handled the weapon before so i don't think you're really gonna unless you get plenty of practice and i don't think you're gonna know or or really be aware too much of those differences but certainly something to think about anyway now if I use my wife's compact, that's say um, my wife's 22, like that thing feel, feels like a BB gun. Like if you don't feel any recoil at all. My compact nine millimeter don't really feel much at all. My full size, I can, I, all right, I can feel a bit, but I've been doing it for a, for a, for a little bit now, so I can feel those differences. If you knew, you're not going to feel them. Next thing is penetration, super important. And this goes. Um, along with hollow point and a round nose, but part of it does anyway. So with penetration, the ammo should penetrate enough to reach vital organs, but not over penetrate and run the risk of injuring bystanders or a person or a thing you don't want to hit. So you've got to look for ammo that penetrates between 12 and 18 inches in ballistic gel. Ballistic gel is like the, uh, a synthetic, um, com- uh, like a synthetic version of like a, a human, like a, uh, the human body, like it, it, um, and there's there's a ratio that, uh, and uh, I can't remember where I found this. Some publication, sh- uh, some publication I found this on. Ah, it, it, oh, shoot, forgot. But basically, the ratio is about two, uh, two to three. So if a bullet penetrates twelve inches in gel, it'll penetrate about eight inches in person. So that's like a standard test they do for the penetration element of a of ammunition. So you want to look for something between 12 and 18 inches in ballistic gel, because that's going to be um, how you'll identify the, that's how you'll identify the penetration of the ammunition, and then you can convert it to what it would be on a person. And you want to make sure that you don't run the risk of over-penetrating, because you might hit someone else, and like I said, with that bullet comes a lawyer, so be careful. Next thing, rail reliability, and I think I've said this in so many different elements of this industry go with a name brand look for a brand i mean you just google search it who has been in business the longest who has provided ammunition for military police departments who's got government contracts things like that find a a well-known brand because of the reliability there are lots and i now have seen this at gun shows there's lots of like little stores that pop up and it's it's like Billy and Bob out of the backyard shed have made their own ammo and they've called it XYZ ammo. Like it might be okay, but it might not be. Go and I and I don't want to smash small businesses like like power to you for, for, for that business. But if I'm if I'm gonna be buying ammunition for self defence that has huge consequences I'm gonna go with something more with, with more brand recognition that's been around for a long time. So reliability, because you you're just increasing the probability of reliable ammo, and you need reliable ammo just 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 to make sure you at least alleviate some of the possibilities of um, malfunctions. Now, yeah, it might be the firearm itself, but also there's there's parts of it that might be the ammunition. So go with a name brand and. Part of this is also is like go to the range and use it and 
try it and test it. But as a new shooter, you're really not going to know the difference. I didn't, so you're not, I'd like, I know you're not going to. So to keep it safe, just go with a name brand. And then over time, you know, um, if you're doing a lot of practice, six months, eight months, 12 months, 18 months in, trying different ammo, you might start to feel a difference or see a difference. But early on, you're not going to know. You're not going to know the damn difference at all. Next thing goes, number five is very similar to, I think, correlates highly with number two that I mentioned with the caliber. This one is recoil, specifically recoil. So when you're brand new, every gun you use, there's going to be some recoil. And it's just because you're not used to a firearm. It's not that you're not strong enough to use one. And most likely, it's just because you, you haven't used one or played around with one before. It's like going to the gym and you, uh, uh, you're so used to the, the, the machines, like the Smith machine, that you start to do free weights and you're like, think the weight's wobbling all over. You're like, you know you can lift it because it's not that heavy, but you're struggling because it's free weights, so you're just not used to it. It's kind of like, that would be my, that would be my, um, that would be my way of explaining it. So recoil, huge, huge thing to consider. This will allow you to shoot more accurately if you have a gun where you can at least somewhat handle the recoil. You'll be able to shoot more accurately and uh, especially um, shot after shot be a little bit quicker. And especially in a self-defense situation, like speed is almost everything. Now, number six, I mentioned it at the start. I don't think it should be a huge factor. And I, I, I know the current economic climate with inflation is ridiculous so i'm going to try to be a little more a little bit more sensitive to this but cost self-defense ammo is undoubtedly more expensive than regular ammo so i guess just i guess just factor it in like i guess that's all i could really say but it shouldn't be like don't buy billy and bob's ammo from the shed down in alabama versus like blazer or federal because it's 20 cents cheaper like just spend the extra 20 cents and you like you, you're increasing the probability of a successful round being shot like you may as well do it your your life or someone else's life's on the line and for 20 cents do you really want to risk it no all right that's all from me today on that topic i hope that helps you if you're a new shooter i hope that helps you choose a type of ammo for self-defense. They're the things you should consider. Oh shoot, I didn't tell you what I chose. So I have um, my nine millimeter hollow point is um, Blazer, that's it. Um, and those are those are all the things that I would consider now. Early on, I, I kind of just was like, hey Tim, my instructor, hey Tim, what should I buy? And he told me what to buy. But now learning more and reading more and shooting more, they're the things I would consider. So hope that helps. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode.